we'd like to welcome Stephanie Campbell uh, from Southeastern Regional College this morning. Stephanie, um, we have uh, the pleasure of her talking about her recent award that she won, the Pearson National Teaching Award for Digital Innovator of the Year. Um, it's a, a very prestigious award and it was announced on national television. So uh, we'd like to hear more about this, how, um, uh, what tips and tricks you use in your college and how you find yourself here. All right. Thank you very much, Stephanie. Over to you. Thank you, Hazel. Um, yes, it's definitely been um, a very strange year on multiple fronts, certainly personally as well as professionally for me. Um, and that was the the Pearson Teaching Award really was, um, was such an honour. I did not expect, I can't tell you, I did not expect that at all, but it was so amazing to be part of, to be honest, to be part of celebrating teaching and the huge amount of work that goes on behind the scenes with teachers and in education and particularly in further education and higher education. And I know I have, I have a real passion for it. I've seen, I've worked in further education in various different formats and community settings and with lots of different types of students and different types of environments and qualifications over the last well, 15 years um, and it's I've seen how it how it can really change lives and at times I think that sometimes comes across as a bit cliched but it's 100% true I've seen people completely change their lives around through further education and through lifelong learning and people coming to me and, and picking up a course in their mid-30s and they've been working on a job that they're just not that happy with and they've completely changed and um i got noticed actually that just this year that one of my students from a few years ago is now qualified got a first class honors degree in midwifery and she's now out working and um, doing what she always dreamed of what she wanted to do and it all started in further education that's where that start her journey started in that so the the gold award was was just incredible incredible and to have it on the one show it was it was amazing it really really was um and then I also I also achieved my master's this year as well so it was two massive professional milestones for me this year and obviously it was a bit limited in how we could celebrate that it was my husband and my daughter and me <laughs> getting a nice pizza that was about the best that we could do but it was still lovely to be able to celebrate that <coughs> excuse me sorry and and none of that would come from, you know, none of that would have been happening without the work that we've been doing at CERC and in the college. And that's what I kind of want to chat through um, today. So I'm just going to share my screen. Um, so, yes. Yeah, so in terms of, of of the award this year was just, yeah, incredible. And I have the trophy sitting beside me as a little reminder of why why I'm doing what I'm doing essentially and and what that means to people and the impact that it can have and particularly over this last calendar year has been such a shift so what we've been doing to kind of support our staff and support students really and how we've been looking at CPD across the college and building on the skills and the knowledge that we already have to help us um deliver and pivot online as as the the phrase that was used quite a lot last spring so when we look at this, we're looking at the story and we've been chatting a little bit about about our stories. And for me, that story is about further education and the impact that it has on young people, older people, all age groups and how further education, from my perspective, I see how it has opened doors for people. But I think we all have our own story in terms of where we're coming from with education but more particularly this year, we've all been impacted really significantly in terms of the pandemic and lockdowns and restrictions and everything else. And everybody has their own story that they're they're trying to work through and they're coming from to education with their story behind them. What is their experience, their passion? What are their dreams, their ambitions? And how can we navigate, to use another cliche, these choppy waters in unprecedented times? How can we navigate that and keeping our story in the background and considering what we, we've been doing to try and, and, and further that story? What's our next chapter? What's, what's our next step? <coughs> Excuse me. So for some of us, it's been about maybe unlearning some skills and relearning some new skills in terms of online delivery. 
for an awful lot of lecturers across and teachers across all of education there's been a real shift from face-to-face -face teaching to online teaching and for some that shift has come very very suddenly and they haven't had you know they haven't been teaching online at all before so how do we help those individuals be supported and feel get confidence in what they're doing so that they can deliver a really high quality experience and open those doors for those students those individuals and keep those doors open looking for new doors and new opportunities for them but all of that takes time and effort and everything else and there's no there's no google search for how to teach during a pandemic unfortunately you can't ask your smart speaker in your room i'm not going to say the name so don't worry so it won't light up in your rooms but there's, there's no quick answer there's no one solution that's going to to fix the problem it's an ongoing multidisciplinary approach that will help us get through this this, this this part of 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 what we're doing with education but not only just get through it but thrive and actually develop what we're doing and look forward to the future and keep those doors opening for those individuals so teaching during during a pandemic is new for everybody and teaching during all of our stories and, and bringing in our own personal circumstances our professional circumstances what we're working with and bringing all of that to the table takes a different approach and in CERC, we've got used to those cha changes and challenges. We um, were part of a merger. Um, I think it was around 2009, I'm going to go with, I'm going to go with 2009, where we had lots of different colleges across Northern Ireland that all merged into six colleges. And with that came huge changes to um, culture, huge challenges in terms of integrating all of a sudden, you know, multiple colleges working within their own organizational cultures and little processes and strategies and how different teams work together, merging that all together into one big college was a huge challenge that we stepped up to and that we worked through. So we've got used to going with the challenges, seeing the opportunities, um, not just seeing the problems, not just seeing the, the difficulties, but seeing what are the opportunities, how can we develop even further and take this to the next level. But obviously last, last March, which seems crazy that that's nearly, we're coming up on a year now, but in February, March, there was a very quick, swift pivot. And I know that that was massively trending on Twitter, the hashtag pivot online, the switch to how we teach, the switch to how we deliver, looking at all of a sudden we've, we were exposing difficulties and challenges that we didn't even know maybe existed with our students, with our teaching staff, with our support staff, elements that we need to be able to do to try and navigate the situation that we were working in. And we're, you know, a good few months down the line now, and we've, I think it's safe to say we've all learned a lot of lessons through that. But at the time, we were still learning. We were still trying to navigate. We didn't even know what the problems were at that point. Nobody did. We were just trying to work through. We had no idea how long it was going to be um, in place for. But all of a sudden, we had all of our learners online, working online. And we really had a policy of that we were still online open for business and we were carrying on with our timetables our students had um, a very smooth transition to online teaching and learning and our staff as well to teaching learning and working online and keeping everything open and everything was still going not as normal but still going in the right direction and still feeling supported with that and what we found was that it really came down to connection how do we connect? Yes, digitally. So things like Wi-Fi access, um, you know, broadband access. And for some of our students and staff working in more rural areas, that was definitely a huge challenge for them. For the same with our students in terms of connecting with one another, with their peers. How do they stay connected to each other? How do our staff stay connected to one another and keep that sense of community together? And we found when we chatted to stuff, some staff members that they were actually in some ways feeling more connected. They were talking to colleagues more often um, to stay in touch with people. And whether that was through Microsoft Teams or through phone calls and even through emails and chats and things like that, that power of connection we felt was still really, really important and for our students as well. 
Um, and it's trying to be cognizant of the difficulties that come with that. You know, we are working from home for some people that can be a really isolating experience. So providing things for people, opportunities to connect with one another and, and help one another and network was really, really important. We've seen how technology has completely transformed communication and how we also work together. And we've seen that before the pandemic and before lockdowns and working and teaching online. But this is just where it came into its complete own set of, 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 um, of abilities to be able to communicate. Um, and I know I was, I, was, I was chatting earlier, I'm a musician and I'm involved in the music scene here in Northern Ireland. Um, and the number of live gigs and videos being posted and Facebook Live events and Zoom gigs and things like that being able to harness the technology to use it to keep that connection going so so important and working together as well and collaborating with one another and um, using technologies such as Microsoft Teams or Office 365 or other platforms that may be available as well um, in terms of what people are using to communicate and collaborate online so just really harnessing what's already there and doing it even more so for us in the college as I say, pre-pandemic, we were working very much on a holistic model and looking at a 21st century learner going into the workforce. What do they need to have? What are the skills, the behaviours, the habits that they need to have going into the workplace, workplace that differentiates them from the others? What are the skills that they need to develop while they're with us? that they can then tap into once they go out into the world of work or into further education or academic research. So what experiences do they need to have? What um, behaviors, how do, we, how do we help shape their attitudes to things? Um, how do we help build those students to become the very best that they can be? And that comes through creativity. It comes through helping develop their emotional skills, their problem solving skills, all of those aspects. And we've had a very strong drive on uh, project based learning over the last number of years at the college and that's where it's really come into its own that ability to create opportunities to um tap into those skills for students and they're maybe coming out of school coming to us and they're learning in a whole new way where they're working on real tasks real you know work-based tasks problems projects that they're working on over the academic year that also help them get the qualification but more importantly is that they're developing these transversal skills which will help them in life forever if you can learn how to think critically at 18 19 20 that's going to pay off for you for the rest of your life so that's really what we've been working on and that came into its own even more so during the online teaching and working we are suddenly faced with all these problems these challenges that need to be worked through so let's work together to get to get the best out of this that we possibly can there can, however, be a little bit of a gap. And that comes when you think about the technology and then what it can do. But there's a gap there between perhaps confidence levels with staff working with technology, knowledge levels, skills, all of those that need to be built up to help address that gap. And it's the same with our students as well. I've worked with countless number of young people who can work out how to get onto YouTube when it's supposed to be blocked, who can use Facebook and Twitter and all these Twitch and all these, you know, online social media things. But to use technology productively and really effectively, there can be a gap there in the knowledge and the skills that they have. So how do we help them to get that knowledge, to get those skills and to get the confidence in how they use it? And that was definitely one of the big drivers for us, certainly with our staff, is that there was a huge willingness and want and a desire to help their students and engage their students and to keep teaching. But sometimes there's a little gap there in having just the skills and the knowledge in order to be able to use that technology to the best of its ability. So this is where our peer support came into its own. We've had a pedagogy mentoring program here at the college for around 10 years. And our mentors, you can see some of their lovely faces there. Um, we 
Uh, the mentors are um, teaching staff that have a full academic schedule that they work on, but they also have around one and a half days a week where they focus on pedagogy mentoring and they are peer supporting our staff and our students as well to help engage with technologies and to bridge that gap for the skills and knowledge so they work with individuals one to one and they go into their classroom with them. They help them with the technology. They help them with new teaching and learning strategies. They provide them with that one to one bespoke support for exactly what that individual needs to help them in their teaching and learning and working online so we ramped that up a little bit of a gear last spring. So we've done weekly webinars for our staff for a number of years now. We've had webinar Wednesdays and we've had Moodle Mondays, which have a focus on our VLE, which is for us it is Moodle. And we added in then Teams Tuesdays. We love alliteration. So we have our Moodle Mondays, our Teams Tuesdays and our webinar Wednesdays and those live workshops all hosted through Teams on we have a, um, a dedicated portal for our staff called Learning at CERC um, Teams site and that's where they can access all of those webinars. They're recorded so they can view them back on stream with audio captions if they if if they want that as well. We have our video channel there. So our teaching staff through the peer mentoring get to see demonstrated lessons they get to see our mentors practice using those technologies and they are supported hand by hand in using the technologies themselves to help get that confidence to help get the skills and the knowledge base to be able to use that technology to the best of its ability and use it for what they need and for what their learners need as well. We also added in one minute CPD and we've been doing that over the last year or so so that normally goes out on a Friday and it's literally a uh, a one minute tiny tip. So it might be like a shortcut key or a really quick way to split your screen so you can use multiple documents at the same time. And these little habits and tricks and tips that really help in your day to day work. And that was hugely popular. People loved it because it meant that they could go away learning something that they could use there and then that really helped in their teaching and working online as well as offline as well. So we have our daily webinars going out, we have peer support programs, pedagogy mentoring team, we also added an online help desk with dedicated support so our staff could literally click on to our staff intranet site and request a mentor callback. They could put in there exactly what their issue is or what they needed help with and a peer mentor then could get on the phone with them, get on a video chat, whatever it is and contact that person and help troubleshoot whatever issue was happening and that's been hugely popular so we've had a few hundred requests come through our service desk to date and they've all been individuals who maybe would have been um, perhaps getting a little stressed out at home working on this one particular issue that's not quite clicking for them it's not quite doing what we, they had hoped it would do and through a quick phone call 15-20 minutes resolved issue done and they can move on with their day and with that confidence and skills there so that peer support was incredibly support important for us in working online. We've gone even further now and we've developed our staff intranet site a little bit more. So we have a Learning Academy homepage where any staff member can access everything that we're doing. So whether that's our um, streamed webinars, you can see there on our stream channel, uh, we have resources, templates, we have our service desk. If you're a new member of staff who's all of a sudden working and teaching online, there's a dedicated place for you to go for getting started tips and tricks as well. We also have our leadership and management training programs, which have been ongoing, and all that support is in place. So wherever you are in the college, if you're teaching, if you're in our support teams, if you're in leadership and management role, if you're brand new into the college or you've been with us for 20 years, there's somewhere for you to go to get help, support, advice, guidance, and sometimes just a friendly ear to say, you're not going mad, that's not working for you, let me help um, and that and, and we've got that site for everybody. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. Let's try not to cough on mic there. So 
With our peer mentoring, what we've seen um, in a wider sense as well is the benefits to the college and the benefits to our staff and our students hugely as well. We've been able to develop those collegial relationships. So as a peer mentor myself now for around nine years, I know that I have friendly ears in nearly every single department in the college. I've taught a bit of plumbing. I've taught a bit of mechanical engineering. I've taught a bit of mathematics. And I'm an English teacher, so that's a big jump. That's a big jump for me. So to have those collegial relationships across every curriculum area really helps. And that they know that they've got a relationship with me as well, where they can drop me a message, say hello, have a chat and, and keep that connectivity that I referred to at the start going. We've also seen teacher attrition really help. So we've be able to provide that support, which makes people feel more confident and more able to do what they want to do in their job role, which is going to make anybody happier in their job role if they feel that they've got the skills, the knowledge, the confidence to be able to do what they want to do. We got some feedback from our staff at just towards the end of last year, and this is what they had to say about the mentoring. So from this, one of our mentors, Mike, and they said they've gone from being rather overwhelmed and a bit fearful about losing stuff to being quite excited about the possibilities. And that's that idea of those doors opening. You know, that cliched phrase of when one door closes and another one opens that my mum has told me for years. But this is so, so true. And this is where it comes in. So that peer mentoring, that bespoke support really helps people to see the opportunities and not maybe just the challenges. And also Kenny, who has been working in the mentoring team for a number of years as well. And it's that idea of being able to even communicate with students. How do I send out a text to all my students to let them know information? He was able to help that person to do that. And for them, that was a barrier that was removed and they were able to communicate with their students and keep them engaged and help them to maintain their learning as well. So for us with the peer mentoring and in a wider sense as well, it's not just about the skills and the tools. You can teach somebody how to use Teams really effectively, teach them about the breakout rooms and what's happening with communication tools and all the fancy things. But it's also about the mindset. It's helping people get that confidence to be able to click the button and go for it. And to be able to do that with somebody hand on hand, where if something does go a bit wrong, you've got somebody there to help can really, really help you make that slight jump to trying something new. And that's been su such an area for us is about helping people try something new and seeing if it works. So we've got a bit of a science bit. So we've got some stats just for this was taken from um, just last academic year and going into the start of this year. So on our Moodle site, we had um, nearly half a million Moodle hits within the first week of going online. And last year we had around 642 active users in our dedicated team site, Portal Learning at Cirque. We also have a, 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 an, a an add-on for our Moodle site that was built in-house and it allows our students to rate the resources on Moodle. It's a bit like a trip advisor for learning resources and with, they were scoring them 4.7 out of 5 and that was over 100,000 resources rated. And on our Microsoft Teams site we had nearly 7,000 active users, that was students and staff as well, working on our Teams site and engaged in the teaching and learning that was happening all during a global pandemic. And then this year then, so had a little update. So we've, we've got up, we've got about another extra 100 users on our learning at Cirque staff portal this academic year, over 9,000 active users on our Microsoft Teams and around 650,000 Moodle actions in our first semester. So what we're seeing from the stats and from the data is that our students are engaging, that our students are able to access information keep going with their learning and their teaching and keep communicating and stay connected. So although our campuses may be closed, our business is very much online and open and working and thriving as well. One of the huge issues that I know has is, is still an ongoing conversation is that um, the digital divide. And that what do we do with our students who don't have five laptops at home or are sharing devices with parents, with brothers, with sisters, with siblings, with grannies, with family members and trying to access their learning as well. So we've lent out around 800 devices to our students and that's been delivered to their homes and that's computers and laptops and it 
it helps to 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 address that issue in terms of students being able to access those devices. We've also been providing Wi-Fi dongles for them to access broadband to try and, and make sure that our students are as supported as they possibly can be in terms of accessing their learning online. So we're really trying to do is say a multidisciplinary approach. For our staff then last year, again, we did a little survey and the feedback that we got was really heartwarming for us and very, very motivating that we felt like we, we have been doing the right things. So that some staff were saying that we felt that the college had acted quickly, that access was provided for online learning and anybody who was experiencing a difficulty, they were able to get that resolved quickly. And that was coming from one of our students. Um, another member of staff said that they felt that we'd acted compassionately in a professional man man uh, manner and that they were proud to be part of CERC and proud to be part of what we were delivering for our students and for, um, for the wider community at the college as well. We've gone a bit further with that. We have a, an ongoing partnership with Forth Valley College over in Scotland um, and we had a collaborative event in August with over 500 teaching staff from both Forth Valley and CERC as well. And we delivered an online conference, all looking at teaching and learning strategies, as well as well-being, which is a huge part of, of what we're delivering to. How do we keep people happy? How do we keep people connected? How do we keep people with the skills, the knowledge, the expertise, the support in place to be able to thrive during this time? So our online collaborative staff development was hugely successful and it was great fun to be a part of and to work collaboratively as well. And we're continuing that. We have another one um, coming up in just a couple of weeks time with our support staff in both colleges, again, working collaboratively online in an online conference to help support our staff in terms of what they're, what they're working online. What we found is that this phrase that we've used a few times is culture eats strategy. We've been developing a culture of collaboration, of sharing, of support over the last number of years. As I say, our peer mentoring program has been in place for around 10 years now. So we have that culture that it's OK to ask for help. Put your hand up. We're here to help. And people have been reaching out to that. And this is where it's come into its own. So you can have the best strategy in the world and memos and emails. But if you don't have the culture there to support that, then it's going to be much harder to push that um, that rock up that hill. Where because we have that culture of openness and saying that when you're teaching, you're not alone. We're here to help. We believe that our teachers are the agents of change. The things that are happening in those classrooms, whether they be online or face-to-face, -face, is shaping our students. It's helping open those doors, create those opportunities for our learners coming in, as I say, whether that's logging in or physically coming into the classrooms. The teachers at the front of those rooms are the people who are changing lives and changing practice in, for, in, in terms of what they deliver. So as we know, the story is still being written. We're back into lockdowns again and restrictions and, and things like that. We've just come through the holiday period where I'm sure for everybody, it was a very different Christmas. So our story is still being written. We need to think now, what is our next chapter? What do we do next? What are our next steps? And that's what we're still doing here at CERC. So on that note, that's that's me complete. Thank you so much for listening. If you've got any questions or queries or you just want to have more of a discussion, I'm more than happy to take any questions now or you can contact us at CERC on Twitter, um, S underscore ERC, or you can email us directly at learningacademy at serc.ac.uk. And thank you so much for having me. Thank you very much, Stephanie, for that uh, brilliant uh, presentation this morning and it's great to hear the, the support strategies that you've put in place in, in CERC and uh, obviously how that has, has encouraged the engagement during the, the current um, uh, um, learning lockdown situation mm -hmm. that we find ourselves in. Um, I will hand over out to the floor. Anybody has any questions for uh, Stephanie? There's Kenji has. <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm very keen. And I, I am envious to a certain extent of, of the CERC over the years. Paula Philpott picking up an MBE yes. <laughs> in this area, yourself yes. picking up the Pearson Award. <laughs> you're, you're setting a high standard here for us to follow. <laughs> uh, I'm really intrigued about 
with the pivot, as it were, to, to online learning and a lot of learners who weren't expecting to be online, mm -hmm. being online. One of the key issues that we've been facing is maintaining student engagement, keeping them motivated to work through without being in a campus around their peers. Um, do you have any insights or tips you could share around how you've managed to keep your students just on target? Keep them with us, <laughs> yes. absolutely. It's a huge issue and I, I don't think, again, I don't think it's an easily solved one. There are so many elements in play with that. Um, and I think it's, I've seen an awful lot of, you know, the Swiss cheese model about addressing each barrier as you can get to it. And I think that's definitely been key. You know, for us, there was a, there was a sense that our, some, for some of our students, they don't have a device. Okay, we can fix that, get a device to them. They've got a computer now. For some students, it's Wi-Fi. Okay, we'll get you sorted with a dongle. For some students, it is the motivation. It's the, the softer side of that, that can be very, very difficult. And I think that's where the pedagogy comes in. I think if you can create a really rich, engaging learning environment for our students, they'll be engaged, setting realistic goals, activities, deadlines, tasks. Um, our PBL strategy has really come into its own as well. So students that were starting off in September, perhaps in a face-to-face -face room, and they've been given a brief of a, a project that they need to work on over the year, a problem that they need to solve with their peers over an entire academic year, that's going to keep them engaged that's going to keep them motivated because they see a bigger picture there that they're working towards and helping to support each other creating as many opportunities to connect as possible is hugely key and that's where the teaching staff come into their own you know they are working with students who have lots of different issues maybe happening in the background at home and they're trying to tap into any issues that they're having to keep them engaged. But that regular communication, that open dialogue with students and teaching staff, I think is definitely a key to that. Communication is, is always going to be key and, and creating those opportunities. So, yeah, I think it, it's, multi, again, it's, it's a multi-pronged approach, isn't it? It's, it's let's help with the devices. Let's help with the Wi-Fi. Let's help with the, the opportunities to learn. Let's help with long-term engagement, with goal setting, with motivation. And we also work closely with the Students' Union who can provide um, extra support outside of that and opportunities for like Kahoot quizzes and tea break quizzes and elements of, of having a bit of fun together as well. But I know it's a, it's a huge issue, Kenji. Absolutely. Yeah. Um. Okay, we seem to have another question here. Mark Goodall, uh, do you have a, a mic there? Yep, okay. Hi, good morning. Thanks, Steph, for the presentation. Uh, my question was around timetables um, and timetabling. We've just issued a new guidance to, to teaching staff for timetabling, and I think we're aware that we can't just replicate what we did yeah. previously um, new. And I just wondered how you were approaching timetabling and what guidance you may be giving to staff. We have where we can, we find that um, keeping a, a pretty similar timetable for online lessons worked actually quite well for us in the spring. Um, and we had some parents commenting that it was the only way that their young person would get up in the mornings was because they had an online class to attend. And again, I think it's about creating that space but creating the opportunities. So the opportunities are there to come online together as a peer group and be online and participate and have that peer connection where they're having a bit of a laugh together and they're talking with one another is so so important but for some students that's just not physically going to be possible and um, there are some of our students who have caring responsibilities or who have issues at home so again providing opportunities for asynchronous learning and keeping it as flexible as possible and um, for, I think for some people they felt like if maybe they would have had like maybe a two and a half hour lesson face to face and they feel that they need to deliver for two and a half hours online and you just can't keep that up there's just no way it's too hard so we've found that we've we've supported been supporting staff in terms of online lesson structure what does that look like for them and giving them real examples of it so providing tasks for students to go offline for half an hour and work on something and then come back online to get feedback to get guidance to get that peer support as well has really helped so for us we haven't um been super stringent on 
what should and shouldn't been happening. It's about having a flexible approach. And the teaching staff know their students, you know, we're there to help them with the pedagogy and give them ideas and support them with implementing new teaching and learning strategies. But in terms of timetabling, we find that for a lot of young people, having that routine has been helpful, even if it hasn't been um, as perhaps as intense or as long of a day as it would have been maybe face to face. Um, thank okay. you. Thank, thank you very much, Stephanie. Um, for the purpose of the recording, uh, I think we'll draw to a close there. So thank you very much, uh, Stephanie. Um, we'll finish up there. That's great. Thank you so much.